So let's look at temptation number one. We're going to begin in Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. Isn't that interesting? That it's the Spirit that leads him into this situation where this is going to happen. It's, it's interesting. And of course, you know, when I read that, I instantly think, thank you, God, that I have a Savior who, who as the Hebrew writer writes, he was tempted in every way such as we are. He went through it. He knows what temptation feels like, but he did not sin. Praise the Lord. So he's, he's led into, this, into the wilderness to, to have this time of prayer and, and preparation. It's right on the heels of his bab, uh, baptism, and he's getting ready to go public, if you will, with his ministry. But then there's an interesting line here. I've, I've always, this is just, maybe this is just the way my brain works, but I read this. It says, after uh, fasting for 40 days and nights. Now, I know that this was, this was a time of prayer, but I'm, I'm reading it and I'm going, I can't go 40 minutes sometimes. 40 days and 40 nights. And then we run into what I really think is the, the biggest understatement in the Bible. He was hungry. Yeah. I would be way hungry. Um, and I know, and I've, I've never, I mean, 40 days, this is like, this is like a superhuman feat. I mean, I don't, I don't know that, I, I just don't know what it would look like to go 40 days for a human being to, to, to do this. But he, you know, the Bible says that this is what happened. And, and I know that people say that once you get through the initial uh, hunger pangs of, of uh, you know, the first several hours or however long, um, that there's a clarity and you actually begin to feel better. But 40 days, man, yeah, he was hungry. Physically, he was no doubt in kind of a weakened state, which is interesting because it says uh, the tempter came to him at that moment. And then when he loves to hit us when we're down, right? So the tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, <clears throat> notice that, you're a child of God in Christ, but the tempter would love to come to you and say, now if anything to get a little wedge, drive a little, a little wedge of doubt, a little confusion uh, if you are the son of God well then tell these stones or turn these stones into bread and Jesus answered it is written man does not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of God love it love it the tempter first off let's just re go back and, and look at that truth that the tempter comes to Jesus at the end of a 40-day uh, period of fasting. When you're weak, when you're overwhelmed, when you're overloaded, when you're, when you're in a state, when you're in a position of compromise or struggle, be on your guard. Be on your guard. The enemy loves. He doesn't play fair. <laughs> he loves to hit us when we're at our weak points. Be aware of that. Be in prayer in those moments because that is just a predict. If, if, if there's one thing that I know that I know that I know about our enemy, he's predictable. You read Genesis 3 and the way he manipulated Adam and Eve, he, he hasn't changed his playbook. It's always the same. Just introduce a question, get you kind of doubting, hold the shiny object out there, make, make promises that won't come true, and get you to bite. And then you wake up and go, oh, what did I do? It's just the way it works every time. So, so he loves to hit us like that. But then number two, look at Jesus' response. So good. It's a pattern all the way through all three temptations. It's, it's, it's so important for us to see this, the Word of God. That's where, it's like Jesus doesn't pause. Jesus doesn't give it thought. Hmm, how should I respond? It just flows out of him. Of course, he is the living word. So it, it, that, you know, I mean, that, that, that works. He's the word incarnate. But, but it's just instantly temptation comes and he responds with God's word. Okay, this is what God says. This thought comes into my mind, but this is what God's word says. And so I'm going to be, it's not even a difficult uh, decision for me. I know where I'm going to go. You see, this is why preachers, Sunday school teachers, all these folks that have been leaders in the church over the course of your lifetime, if you've grown up in the church, this is why you've heard about memorizing Scripture and having a quiet time and being in God's Word and filling up your heart and mind with God's Word. 
because every time temptation or thought that would lure you away from a pure devotion to Christ and we come across these crossroad moments all the time every time those thoughts come into your mind if your heart is filled with God's truth the Holy Spirit I call it ammunition you're giving the Holy Spirit ammunition you're giving him something to work with he can bring those up and help you to remember no that's not of God this is the way to walk heard a really cool story from my uh, Aunt Doris years ago. She was talking about counterfeiters. There's a, there's a whole group of people in the government who, who just deal with, you know, in the treasury that deal with counterfeiting money. And they train them, of course. And the way they train, I mean, there's, there's just been bazillions of different ways that people have counterfeited hundreds and fifties and different denominations of, of, do, of bills. And they could spend their whole life just looking at all the different forms of counterfeit money that have come along. And maybe they even do some. But the, the vast majority of what they do, they study the real thing. They look at a real $100 bill and they look at it up close and far away and under magnification and all kinds of different ways. Every little twist and curve and the, the fabric of the paper and every, every nuance of the design of that bill. Because here's what they learned. When you know the real thing, you can spot a counterfeit a mile away. You see how that works? You don't have to study all the different temptations that are out there, okay? <laughs> As a matter of fact, I recommend highly that you don't. Um, but study the real thing. Study the truth. Spend time with God daily in His Word and in prayer. Fill your heart up because when you do, you'll spot a counterfeit miles away. And when a thought comes or suggestion comes from the enemy into your mind, you'll say, mm-mm. That, 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 that sent off, I call it the Holy Spirit beeper. That sent off the Holy Spirit beeper right there. That is not of God, right? Here's what God's Word says. That's what Jesus teaches us with this example.